show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to my review for the free PlayStation Plus games for the PlayStation 3 in the month of December. Now apologies again for the lateness of these videos. As you may know from my PlayStation 4 video, uh, there were a few issues with uh, my videos in November and that kind of pushed all my timing back and unfortunately then the Christmas period kind of threw everything out of whack as well because we've been away for most of the week around Christmas so that's kind of put another delay on things unfortunately. Anyway in this video we're covering the PlayStation 3 games and they are the Siberia Collection and X-Blaze Lost Memories. So let's start off with the Siberia Collection and this covers two games, Siberia and Siberia 2. And the first thing to note about these games is the fact that they were originally released on the PlayStation 2 based on the age of them. The first game was released in 2002 and the second one was released in 2004. Now obviously the PlayStation 3 itself wasn't released until 2006. So they were then bundled together in one collection package and sort of remastered and tweaked a little bit for the PlayStation 3. So in terms of sort of sound and graphical fidelity, this isn't what you would normally expect even from a PlayStation 3 sort of game. It um, is quite clearly an upscaled version of uh, a previous generation game. The other thing as well is because these games are very very story driven I have only really tinkered around with Siberia 2 ever so slightly really just to see about the controls and the, the sort of the basics of the game to see if they improve on the first game in any way because I was unable to obviously play all the way through the first game I didn't want to encounter any potential spoilers or anything I didn't want to delve too deeply into the second game just in case it revealed a little too much about the first game that I was unaware of but in terms of the first game I did play it for a fair few hours and it is sort of a broken broken sword type game. You control a character called Kate Walker who works for a New York law firm and at the start of the game she is charged with travelling to this little provincial village and basically finalising the contract signing of a factory. However the owner of the factory dies and after going to the company that she has basically used to sort out all the, the legal bits and pieces to do with her death it is discovered that there is actually an heir to the factory. Kate's law firm believed that she was just an old spinster, had no family, no children, no siblings, cousins, anyone around so they were under the impression that in the event of her death because she was of failing health um, that they would still be able to conclude the business transaction with the law firm in this village but that very quickly proves not to be the case and then you kind of have to play detective to track down this relative and I won't say any more than that in terms of the story just because I don't want to reveal too many things because I learnt quite a few bits and pieces very very early on in the game that kind of blows your early perceptions of the family that run this factory and the goings on in the town kind of blows them wide open so I will kind of keep a lid on that but basically what you initially think is going to be a very sort of easy sign this paperwork job done obviously gets into something very much different from that. And that's where the broken sword similarities kind of come in. You are charged with sort of finding your way around different parts of the town and the factory and presumably anyway on towards Siberia. In terms of the overall gameplay there are various different puzzles and things that have to be done. 
items to be collected um, bits and pieces to sort of be put together so that you can use those to unlock doors um, and get things like letters and pictures to build up a bit more of a story about what's going on that plays out quite nicely a lot of the time it's unlocking things to unlock other things to get other keys to progress even further so in that sense it's obviously very linear you have to do a to unlock b to acquire the key to unlock c um, my major gripe with the game really is the way that kate is controlled i think this is because it is a playstation 2 game that is being upscaled to playstation 3 the transitions between screens are very very slow and her movement is very very slow as well. There are a few animations which you can see kind of take a little while to load up and the characters kind of jump a little bit when certain animations start or finish and you just don't really tend to get that too much in more modern games, not even really on PlayStation 3 games. To be honest though, after the first sort of half an hour or so, you do kind of get used to that. Um, you just sort of move your way through and those sort of brief loading times become sort of second nature to be honest. So it doesn't put too much of a damper on the game. It's just something to be aware of when you first start playing really. It wasn't something that I expected. At first I wondered if the game was a bit glitchy, um, but it was just general loading times really although speaking of glitchy there was a moment where Kate somehow managed to get stuck on a particular map and she was sort of forced into a corner and I couldn't move her out whatever way I moved her there were sort of invisible walls around her so I did have to restart that section fortunately when you solve a certain puzzle or go through a new door things like that the game does auto save so I had just put a certain item in something else and therefore sort of solved that part of a puzzle so when I had to reload from the main menu it put me exactly where I was so I didn't have to actually replay any of that section which was a relief to be honest and because of that you don't have to worry about manually saving all the time only really when you quit out and uh, stop playing. Right, moving on to our second game, X-Blaze Lost Memories. Now, I say game because it's not actually a game, although it was released on the PlayStation 3. It is a graphic novel. I didn't know this when I first loaded up the game, and it just seemed like cutscene after cutscene after cutscene, and it wasn't until about 25 minutes in that I just did a quick search and found out that this was actually a graphic novel instead of an actual game. So because of this it's going to be very very difficult to judge. Obviously graphic novel means the whole thing is based on storyline. There's no gameplay element or anything like that involved. This particular story, for want of a better term, is very very Japanese. It's all voiced in Japanese with English subtitles and is obviously clearly an anime. As far as I could glean from my time with it at the beginning, the main character who I found out again through searching is just called the protagonist. She has a little sister who again is just called or referenced as little sister. They don't actually have names for some reason. Something happens at the very beginning of the story revolving around their mother um, and it seems like she dies. Um, however, that might be revealed later in the storyline to be a bit of a twist. I don't know. You don't actually see her die, but she's dying at the beginning of the game. She gets taken away by the girl's father. Um, it then sort of jumps about 10, 15 years into the future or into the present day because that's all presented as a flashback and the older sister is basically looking after her younger sister, shielding her especially from her father. There's a lot of resentment towards him and after a little while when she goes out into town her little sister is abducted when she comes back She's not there um, and she gets transported into this strange other world where she meets a character called Nobody who is some kind of, seems to be some kind of quiz master. Now that's basically as far as I got, that, that was my experience with it in a nutshell to be honest. It was very difficult to follow, um, 
mainly because of the Japanese voiceover, so you're constantly reading subtitles. The screens themselves are basically just two people standing in front of each other talking at each other. There's not really a lot actually visually going on. It would probably be easier, in all honesty, to enjoy this just as a book, to be honest. I've never really seen the appeal of graphic novels, even for sort of games that I particularly like or stories that I particularly like. I would rather either experience them as a game or as a film or just reading the book, to be honest. It's a very odd medium that I've never really seen the appeal in, to be honest, but that's obviously my own personal feelings. One thing I did learn as well from doing a bit of searching about this game is it's actually part of a larger story. So obviously if you are aware of the other novels within this story you might be aware of the characters already and have some kind of investment in them. Obviously I came in not knowing anything about um, any of them so I didn't have that connection and kind of lost interest with what's going on pretty quickly to be honest. Right, moving on to buy, try or fly. Here are the two games in question. So we have the Siberia collection and that is priced as you can see here at $24.99 on the PlayStation Store normally. And we have X-Blaze Lost Memories which is also $24.99 usually on the PlayStation Store. Now first off with the Siberia collection, if you quite like that puzzle element, uh, if you've played things similar to this, like Broken Sword, and you quite enjoy solving puzzles and, and finding out different things about the characters involved and stripping away these layers to find out what's really going on, I would definitely suggest you try this game. I appreciate when this gets uploaded there won't be a lot of time to try this before it goes back up to $24.99. I don't think personally it is worth $24.99. It is a very old game, um, in fact it's it's sort of a, a remaster of an even older game on a previous generation, so for that reason I think $24.99 is a little bit steep even though you are getting two games involved in that. If it was say the other side of £15, um, it might be worth purchasing it, especially if this is your kind of genre, but certainly for $24.99 I do think that's not particularly good value for money. But if you are able to download it before the games change over in January, then I definitely would suggest trying this game. As for X-Play's Lost Memories, at $24.99 I definitely wouldn't purchase this game. Unless you are particularly aware of the characters already, or unless you really really like Japanese anime and the whole reading English subtitles thing isn't too much of a problem for you, or you are one that really really enjoys graphic novels, I would say fly away from this game to be honest because I don't think you would enjoy it. It's going to be a very very small minority niche market that would certainly pay for this game or probably even be able to spend the time getting all the way through the story. I found it to be quite hard work just sort of sitting there and passively absorbing all of this so for that reason I would suggest flying away from this game. So there we are, they are my thoughts on the free PlayStation Plus games for the PlayStation 3 in the month of December. If you have played either of these games please let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Also if you have a PlayStation 4 please check out my video for the PlayStation 4 games for December and I will be back later with my thoughts on the PS Vita games for December as well. But until then, I have been that British guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.